No, I can't win. <laughs> I moved the location of this video so many dang times. I got a dog hanging over me. I got two dogs hanging over me because they want my snacks. Here. Can you go away? Chaos. It's pure chaos. Hey y'all, how's it going? Welcome to Seed to Plate channel. My name is Brooke. Sorry for the chaos, um, but that's par for the course around here. And if you've never been here before, uh, we talk all things urban and suburban gardening. So I have been gardening for quite a number of years in balcony spaces, rental houses, community gardens, the whole kit and caboodle. Um, and today we are going to be doing not quite a seed haul. Some of these seeds are new that I want to talk about, but really I want to talk about the seeds and the plants that I enjoy growing. Um, and so this is gonna be a long video, pop in some headphones, wrap some presents, fold some laundry, enjoy your life, do something, uh, cause you gonna, you gonna be here for a while. I'm also gonna put chapters um, of which vegetables we're talking about, so you can skip around if you want, if you want recommendations on a certain thing. Know that I am in zone 8B, um, and I do try and buy from a lot of different seed companies, so I'm not somebody who's kind of like super loyal to just one seed company. I like to buy from a lot of seed companies, and I'll talk about those seed companies kind of intermixed throughout this video. So, buckle up, <laughs> and let's talk about some plants. We're actually gonna start with tomatoes because tomatoes are always my favorite. Um, so we'll start with the cherry tomatoes. Now cherry tomatoes, um, I always end up with cherry tomatoes first whenever I plant tomatoes throughout the year. The yellow pears are arguably some of my favorite. Um, they're super sweet, not super acidic. They grow really prolifically um, and they're just really, really tasty. So yellow pear for sure. These are, this is the Sweet Yard Seed Company and I had these sent to me um, from Amazon as a gift, um, which was very, very cool. Black strawberry tomato. These were fun last year, but I just didn't notice that the flavor was like super solid. I'm gonna grow them again just to see. We had a weird gardening year last year and um, one of my other garden friends on Instagram said that these were some of her favorites. So I'm thinking it was maybe just a weird year. So these are black strawberry from Baker Creek. Baker Creek definitely specializes in some really rare varieties, which is pretty cool. Um, and their catalog every year is like really beautiful. Um, and then we have Brad's Atomic Grape. This is another one. I'm gonna try and grow it again this year. This will be my third year trying to grow it. The first year was a little weird because it was a rescue plant, like somebody had put it out of the community garden and didn't want it, and it was pretty late in the season, so I planted it. I got one tomato off of it, and I don't remember it being like life-changing. Um, I tried it last year, crappy, crappy, crappy <laughs> tomato year last year because of just our weather and everything else that went wrong. Um, so I'm gonna give these another shot this year and just see if they're kind of worth the hype. I got interested in them because uh, I was watching Roots and Refuge Farm a couple of years ago and she said that these taste like a slightly like hoppy beer. Now I have celiac disease so I can't drink beer. <laughs> But I was very intrigued about a tomato that had a similar profile, flavor profile to beer. Sunrise Bumblebee, hands down, my absolute favorite. I will grow these every year until the day that I cannot grow them anymore for whatever reason. These are my favorite tasting tomato. They're really sweet. They've got a little bit of a pop of acidity. They're so good. They're beautiful. They've got like this beautiful striping to them. They literally look like little like starburst candies out in the garden. It's really cool. Now, Berry's Crazy Cherry, these are ones that, hot take, I think they're a little overhyped. Um, to me, when I've grown them, they're really tart. Um, really, really tart, and I don't ever get these like massive clusters like they show. Like, I always get the massive cluster of flowers, but not actual tomatoes, so I'm wondering if this is very dependent on like the growing conditions. I mean, every optimal performance plant is. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and grow these. I'll have like one plant of them just for funsies. Um, I do like putting them in something like a tomato pie, which like has a lot of different flavor profiles, but in terms of just like kind of popping them on their own, not my fave. So this is a large red cherry. This is left over from a little seed packet that I got from my boyfriend when I first started gardening and they put so many freaking seeds in this thing. I have no idea how much he paid for that like seed vault. This was also in like 2019 when gardening wasn't as like big of a deal. Um, but these seeds still perform really, really well and they are 
they'll be four years old this year. I mean, they're not new seeds and every year they've performed great. And they're like a very standard cherry tomato. They're pretty fat. They're like, I don't know, that big, probably like, probably like slightly smaller than like a ping pong ball. Um, so don't, this is kind of my message that don't be afraid of hybrids. That's likely what these are. Um, I think a lot of times, and I'm going to make another video that'll come out, um, a week after this one, <laughs> um, that will go through um, all the different kind of like seed packet meanings because I think seed packets can get really confusing and especially if you're just, either if you're just now learning about buying seeds or if you have just always only bought heirloom seeds, um, I think it's just good to understand like what does open pollinated mean? What does non-GMO mean? What do all these things even mean? Like, what am I reading? Um, so look out for that video next week, shameless plug. Hi, Cooper, what are you doing? Okay, so moving on to slicer tomatoes. Now, again, tomatoes are certainly my favorite thing to grow in the spring and summer, for sure. So I have a lot of tomato varieties. Um, but it was really interesting because the first time I grew beef steaks, I had a guy at my last community garden who, uh, his name is Paul, and he is just the most wonderfully hearted man. He told me that he never tried to grow beefsteak tomatoes in Texas because he was always told that they wouldn't grow here. Um, and my kind of response to that was, I think I was just maybe like a young, dumb gardener who just like didn't know any better or hadn't been told stuff like that before. Um, but I have successfully grown beefsteaks uh, and different slicer tomatoes in my zone um, for years now. So don't be afraid to try something just because somebody said that's not possible. Um, Again, I didn't know it wasn't possible, and actually I gave him a beefsteak transplant the year after he told me that, and they grew beautifully, and he was so excited. But I wanna talk first about brandy wines, okay? So this is a yellow and a pink brandy wine. I have never been able to successfully grow brandy wines here. Don't know why. Might have been the seed, so that's why this is from a different seed company, and I'm anxious to see how this one goes, um, but... I've just ne I've been able to grow other varieties of like big fat slicers like Cherokee Purple and different Paul Robeson, um, but never the brandy wine. So we're gonna try again this year just to see. But I'm I'm not overly hopeful. I'll put it that way. And brandy wines are one you hear about a lot because they're like a pretty standard like slicer or heirloom tomato and actually a really good book if you want to learn more about tomatoes like if you really want to zone in it's a book called epic tomatoes um you can get it on amazon it's an awesome book that explains why you have like yellow versus pink flesh and you know like it's it explains just a lot i learned a lot about tomatoes i actually want to reread it i haven't read that book since last december so it's been almost a year i want to reread it actually just to kind of freshen up my knowledge um so that's kind of my take on brandy wines they're cool, but I just can't put a lot of my emotional energy into them because of the failures I've had. Okay, so the rest of the tomatoes are separated out by color. So we'll start with your typical reds. Now, this beefsteak, I just really haven't had much success with these seeds in general. So I'm probably honestly going to get rid of them. Oh, I don't think there's any seeds in here. <laughs> I don't think I kept them. Oh, that's really embarrassing. So I won't be growing these. <laughs> Now, these are ones that were sent to me uh, by a garden friend. I've never tried Haas Tools uh, seeds, so I'm excited to try these um, a lot. It's called the Haasinator tomato. Um, so this will just be a really good big red slicer. And then we'll talk about some striped tomatoes. So this Wild Boar Solar is one, again, that I was sent um, to try out. And I, I definitely planted the seed last year, and I had a plant. Um, but it did not uh, do well because of the season. Um, so I really want to try that one. This is a uh, this is a red with a yellow stripe, and it's a big slicer tomato. And then these green zebra. I really want to try these just because the idea of a ripe green tomato is like really fun to me. Um, and again, after reading that book, Epic Tomatoes, I'm like just very intrigued by different types of tomatoes. I really want to lean into some yellow tomatoes this year and orange. Um, 
I just think they're really, really sweet. I think they're really good in salads. Um, and I just want to try some more of those varieties. So I've grown Golden Jubilee in the past. These have always done really well for me. I just feel like I haven't necessarily gotten the amount of productivity out of them that maybe I want. So that's something I want to do a little bit better at this year. Um, and then we have these Valencia heirloom tomatoes, which they truly look like little Valencia oranges blows my mind and then again these are some seeds that I was sent to try they are chef's choice orange tomato save the best for last <laughs> I love like purple deep deep tomatoes they have like this beautiful smoky flavor and I'm definitely somebody that leans on the savory end and kind of like that umami and if you've never heard the term umami it's basically if you've ever had something that's like salty and satiating like soy sauce or really well cooked mushrooms those all have a really high amount of umami so you have like sweet sour like all the different taste buds in your tongue umami is another flavor that you can taste and so i find that the purple tomatoes have a really deep umami flavor that i personally really enjoy like if i'm gonna make a blt or a tomato sandwich then my tomato of choice is gonna be the paul robeson these are 100% my favorite tomatoes to grow and eat. Like I ceremoniously look forward to my first Paul Robeson. And this year I didn't get any because the squirrels got them all. Uh, I was kind of okay with all of my stolen tomatoes until they got my Paul Robesons. And then I wanted to like blow things up. So the other ones, I'll be trying this one called Purple Boy and Chef's Choice Black. Um, I will be trying these two, which were sent to me. And then Black Crim, these are ones that are nice and small. I don't notice that they have as good of a flavor as the Paul Robesons, but they're still good. Um, and then I'm just now realizing I don't have any Cherokee Purple Seeds. And I really like Cherokee purple tomatoes, so I'm going to have to find some of those. Um, and then these are Purple Rain, Raspberry Mochi, and Daifuku are the other ones that I will be trying. Um, and these are all indeterminate tomatoes, by the way. I think there's a couple sprinkled in here that are like semi-determinate. But for the most part, these are all indeterminate tomatoes. And really, again, I'll go over this in my seed video, but the difference between determinate and indeterminate is your indeterminate tomatoes have an indetermined or undetermined size that they get to the conditions are right and you keep watering those puppies they will just grow 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 I a couple of years ago had a really good tomato year and I swear my plants were like 10 feet tall there if you were to stack me twice you would have that tomato plant like there's a photo of me like holding it up and it was just like huge um, that was the year where we had an insane amount of rain which was excellent so with determinants which I'm going to talk about next determinants are a determined bush variety so you don't want to like trim them up you don't want to prune them you literally just let them go and all the fruit sets at once and that is ideal for making sauce so when you're if you're looking for a good tomato to make sauce you're gonna look for paste tomatoes or they're sometimes called sauce tomatoes um, that's what you're gonna want to look for now last year was my first year growing true determinants um i i'm obsessed like it's aggressive how obsessed i am mostly because i've really enjoyed it was so rewarding and fun to like pick all of these tomatoes at once and bring them home um and then it was also super rewarding uh it's been super rewarding this fall and winter using all my canned tomatoes like i can't talk enough about it i feel like i discovered something new that like other people have just like known about <laughs> like <laughs> I don't know it's pretty wild so um I'm kind of doubling down on my determinants this year and that's really because I so enjoyed I've enjoyed the canning part of everything I don't know that canning for eight hours in one day was my best move in the world I'll leave a video link down below because I chose to film it I filmed my first time ever canning and then put it on the internet. Mm hmm Yeah, I did get emails saying that I was going to kill myself and my family with botulism. That was weird. So, um, I didn't. Still here, still alive. So, with paste tomatoes, I'm still kind of trying to figure it out. I feel like I know at this point what varieties of slicers and cherries work well here. 
These I'm still trying to figure out. Now we're just gonna start out in a really aggressive place, okay? Because it's me, and you've probably learned that that's, that's just how it goes here. San Marzano tomatoes. Overrated. Fight me. Now, I will say, if you're buying canned tomatoes like at the store, San Marzano's are probably gonna taste a lot better. But here's the funny, funny little silly, silly goof goof part. Okay, San Marzano tomatoes, it's like champagne. We all know champagne. So champagne is really just Prosecco, which is sparkling wine, but you can call it champagne when it's grown in Champagne, France, okay? San Marzano tomatoes, similar situation. San Marzano tomatoes are simply a type of tomato. Yes, technically it is different, but you really can only call them San Marzano tomatoes if they are grown in San Marzano, Italy. And here's the kicker. These tomatoes, I've grown them two years in a row. They look like garbage. I will see if I have photos, but I did last year, I went hard on the determinant tomatoes. I basically had like a five by 20 foot row of tomatoes and I did I did two rows and they were probably like, I don't know, 18 to 24 inches apart. Okay, these plants. So I had all my San Marzanos in like a little square. And then I had six in the longer bed and then four of my Romas, okay? My like regular old Romas, which I'll show you, and then the other varieties, which I'll show you, looked beautiful, okay? Beautiful. They looked amazing, they tasted amazing. My San Marzanos looked so bad. They looked diseased, like so diseased. The other plants did not succumb to whatever the heck was happening with those San Marzanos. I think I got a few, but I don't think I even got that many. So San Marzanos are overrated. I will not be growing these this year. I will be leaning into some of these other varieties I'm gonna show you that I think probably just do better in my region. Now, if you have had luck with San Marzanos, I would like for you to actually leave a comment because I have not talked to one person. Granted, I'm in the South. I'm in like Texas South. Like that is like, that is like one of the most Souths, you know? Nobody seems to do well with it. I'm not sure it's because of the humidity or whatever. So if you have done well with San Marzanos, let me know, yes or no, and tell me approximately where you're located. You don't have to, you don't have to be like, here's my zip code, but like, just tell me approximately where you are. Okay, thanks, bye. So two of the determinant varieties I grew last year that did Phenom were Invincible and Red Snapper. Now I'm pretty sure the Invincibles were the like Roma type and the Red Snapper was like a slicer type. Um, either way, they all went into sauce, I'm not gonna lie to you, and they were real good. Um, so I will be growing both of these again. Now, this one I literally just got because it was kind of fun. This is the Heinz tomato, like, as in Heinz ketchup. And I just thought it was fun. Um, so we'll see how well they grow here. I'm not super sure. I, I would need to look at where these kind of were brought up. Um, but this gives me an opportunity to talk about this seed company. This is the Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. Now, Southern Exposure Seed Exchange, I literally just read through their catalog last night, which was dangerous. Does it look like I can fit more seeds in here? Because I can't. So, I really like Southern Exposure Seed Exchange, and I have had amazing luck with every single seed I've ever gotten from there because they select heirloom varieties that specifically do well in the South. They've got so much amazing information on their website about like how plants do in the humidity or even they separate out which peppers are early producers, which I've actually found growing bell peppers that I actually prefer to get early producing bell peppers because they start to put on fruit before it gets too hot for them to lose their flowers. So it's just small things like that that I really appreciate about Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. So if you are in the South, and I'm talking like Southern California, Arizona, all the way down and up to Virginia, if you consider yourself either in the Southwest or in the South, or if your voice sounds a little funny, you might want to look at Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. But Heinz tomatoes, stupidly excited. Probably just gonna grow one, see how it goes. Now let's talk about Roma tomatoes. This is another like Amazon seed vault situation <laughs> from my boyfriend from 2019. 
These have been the best producing tomatoes I've ever grown in terms of like Roma tomatoes. Pretty sure they're more semi-determinate than determinate because when I've grown them, they kind of just like keep going. Like, whereas some of these other varieties, like the Red Snapper and the Invincible, they just stop growing. They're like, meh, we're good. We're done here. But these don't really stop growing. So I'm now realizing that these other two packets of Roma tomatoes I have also don't say if they're determinate or indeterminate. I'm gonna grow them anyway because they do amazing here. Um, but just regular old Roma tomatoes. These are not anything super special. Um, they're not anything, I mean, I think this one is an heirloom Roma VF Virginia Select. Actually, that might be a hybrid. So, you know, with determinate tomatoes, looking at the usage is really important. So for example, your Romas are gonna be really, really good for sauce making, um, but this one, the Principe Borghi Borghese, Borghese, um, these I've read a lot about, and this is actually a variety that's also grown in Italy, sometimes Greece, um, and these are actually really good for uh, drying drying, roasting, or making tomato paste, or I also saw somebody dehydrate them and make tomato paste powder. So like, instead of tomato paste, you would use like this like powder situation. Not really sure how I feel about that, but it's definitely something I'm interested to try. Oh, and then I forgot to show this seed packet. Um, this is from, <laughs> I don't know if I should say this on the internet, but I'm going to. Um, this is from when I was in the Netherlands this summer. I was in Amsterdam and I just could not help but uh, bring some seeds back. And from my research, it's not illegal. The only thing that's illegal to bring back, you should always look. The only thing was bulbs because of the dirt and the germies and the dirt that you could bring back. So, seeds, nobody said no, and I cleared customs, so we're just gonna believe it's okay. But I'm weirdly excited to see how these do, just because I've never gotten seeds from like another country, but it's so cool, like this is all like either Norwegian or I, I don't know what language they speak. I probably sound like an idiot. Okay, continuing on with paste tomatoes. I really wanted to try all the different like famous paste tomatoes and that is Hungarian Italian paste. That is Amish paste. And three sisters. So these plus the Romas are gonna be my main saucing tomatoes um, that I will use for sauces. And I'm just excited to see the different flavor profiles. I'm excited to see how they cook up. Um, and then the last one, which this is like just kind of silly, um, but I'm excited. <laughs> I don't know at what point my camera cut out. <laughs> I told y'all this was gonna be long. So these are the Eleni Gold Tomatoes, um, and I'm very excited to grow these um, because they are like a really deep, like yellow, almost orange color, um, and I really want to can them and make what I'm already calling sunshine sauce. I shouldn't be so excited, but I am. I'm imagining sunshine sauce with like homemade gnocchi with like a little like drizzle of pesto. Who wants to come over for dinner? Okay, good job y'all. That was arguably the longest part of this whole video. Other than the next thing we're gonna talk about, which are peppers. Now, a lot of my peppers are from Baker Creek and that's simply because uh, I ordered like a bunch of pepper seeds. I would like to explore some other companies. With being said, I've always had great performance from the Baker Creek pepper seeds. Shishito peppers will definitely be grown in the spring garden. I love these. These are some of my favorite snacking peppers and the plants are super prolific. Like. This is one of, it's one of the first peppers that ends up being able to be harvested and they are just so good with like a garlic aioli and you dip dip and yeah. Now here's another one from the Netherlands. These are kind of like a sweet yellow pepper. I, I think I, I think I kind of blacked out when I was choosing all these seeds because I just, <laughs> we were in the airport and I just wanted to take something home like, like that. And so I just started like indiscriminately grabbing stuff. So not a pino. I think I'm over it. Like, I think it was cool for a couple of years, but like, it just doesn't have much appeal to me anymore. Like, the Nata Pino is, um, is like a non-spicy jalapeno. And while it's cool, my, uh, labeling skills are not good enough to label the Nata Pino from the jalapeno. So I never know. 
if it's gonna be spicy or not. And that's like not a task I would like to just try. Now, orange bells and king of the north. So these are bell peppers. The, or the orange bells are really great. Um, I do think I may get some of the early producers from Southern Exposure Seed Exchange because I'm curious about them. King of the North, these are early producers. So when you're talking about bell, pep bell peppers, and I've gotten both of these to, um, to be really prolific. Like 2021 was a bomb pepper year. Um, and I had so many bell peppers and I chopped them and froze them and I was using bell peppers through like January. It was wonderful. So with bell peppers, um, because of where I'm located in Central Texas, there's a very short runway between March and June before it gets over like 90 degrees. So your tomatoes and your peppers are generally not gonna do well when it gets over 90 degrees. And the reason for that is they will just start dropping flowers. So once they start dropping flowers, that means that they're stressed and they're not gonna produce any more fruit, um, whether it be a tomato or a pepper or a night plant or whatever. So now what you can do is you can plant these early, hobble them through like, June, July, August, and then once it starts to cool down, you can kind of let them keep going and see if you get another crop out of them. So they will overwinter pretty well. Hatch green chilies, 100%, 100%, yes. Craig's Grande Jalapeno, yes. I love growing jalapenos. I'm really looking forward to canning a lot of salsa this year, hopefully, <laughs> um, and so I'm really excited about that. Jimmy Nardellos, I did grow these last year. My plants did not do great. Again, not a great garden year last year. Um, honestly, at this point, maybe just like take a sip of water every time I say that and you'll be super hydrated by the end of this. So Jimmy Nardello will definitely be growing this. I like having sweet peppers on hand because I like throwing them into like stir fries or omelets. I like being able to like run out in the garden, grab a quick little pepper and move along with my day. Uh, habanadas totally growing these. Like, I did not appreciate these enough when I grew them the first time. And people would like, I'd tell people, I'm like, yeah, you can just have it. Like, I'm so sick of peppers, it's not even funny. And people were like, these are so good. Um, so habanadas are like habaneros without the spice. Um, and I'm also, I also wanna get like real habaneros too, um, because I wanna do like some habanero peach or habanero mango salsa, just, for funsies. Serranos, yes, this is a staple in my garden. I will be using it to make salsa. Uh, mini bell peppers. These are weirdly just a really fun one to grow. I try and grow garden snacks. <laughs> so like when I'm out there, I can just like grab something and eat it. These are super cute. Um, they're super, super cute. I love them and I think everybody should just grow something. I will literally be out in the garden and I'll just chomp on it. Anaheim peppers, again, salsa, enchilada sauce, and poblanos, again, salsa, enchilada sauce. Now the other thing, uh, there's about to be a really funny story on my Instagram about these scotch bonnets. So, quick story time, two years ago, two years ago? It was a long time ago. My partner Cam looked at me and said, he became really fascinated with Jamaican jerk chicken. Um, he's really amazing at smoking meat and he just gets really interested in like these really like complex and like very deeply cultural dishes. So he like dove into all this research about Jamaican jerk chicken and one of the first things he asked me was, uh, can you grow me some scotch bonnets? And I said, sure, I can sure try. So I got these from Sandia Seed Company and I got a couple of other seed packets from them. They're great. These are great seeds. If you need any kind of special pepper, highly recommend this seed company. But the funny thing about this is that we had a crappy garden year. Take a sip of water. And I was so upset because I grew these crazy peppers for Cam. So I started the plants in January. I put them in the ground in March. It is December and we just got <laughs> some scotch bonnet peppers <laughs> to make Jamaican jerk chicken. So it has probably been a year and a half since Cam asked me to grow these for him and literally the Jamaican jerk chicken is marinating in our fridge right now. Like we are about to have Jamaican jerk chicken after almost a year 
from when I started this seed. Now, that's not normal, by the way. Um, I started I started all my peppers, or I, I tried to grow all my peppers in my backyard, which does not have very ideal light um, at all. And that, that's been a huge learning experience for me. And peppers do best, absolutely best, when they have an insane amount of sunlight. I also didn't top my peppers, which I had done the year before, and the soil quality was not great in the place I was growing them. So they did not have many things going for them, like my peppers also, it was also just a terrible gardening season. My peppers sucked, they were terrible. Okay y'all, we're moving on to melons. Now, I don't like watermelon, okay? If you've watched this channel at all before, you know I don't like watermelon. I don't know why, I've tried to grow it myself. It's a texture thing for me. I've tried to put it with different things. I've tried to put that chili lime salt on it. I've tried to put balsamic and feta and mint. I've tried to like watermelon, okay? I've tried. I don't even like the way the juice tastes. Like watermelon juice, no. I do love other melons though. Um, and I am gonna show you one watermelon because I'm insane. So um, this honey rock melon from Baker Creek, this is like a cantaloupe type. I will be attempting to grow those. Kajari melons, uh, Kajari melons are just like super cute. I got these seeds, by the way, in a seed swap. If you ever have the opportunity to participate in a seed swap, it's actually super fun. Like, it's super fun. So the one watermelon that I am gonna try and grow, I tried to grow it last year, and it's gonna be kind of a weird reason. I really like the foliage. The foliage is really beautiful. It's like this deep green with yellow, and melons are one of the plants that do really well here in the south when it is disgusting outside. Like, I'm talking 100 degrees, it's nasty. Your melons are still rocking and rolling. So this is gonna be a little weird, but I really wanna grow this specifically because it'll do well during the hardest part of the garden year. Um, so this is a yellow fleshed moon and stars watermelon. I tried to grow these last year, but whole host of problems. Bad gardening year. Take another sip of water, you dehydrated devil. Um, and then the other one that I'm that I got is uh, a musk melon. It's called the plum granny. Uh, queen and pocket melon. I'm gonna put a picture of these up here. This is the cutest thing. Like, it sounds dumb. I love melons. But this is just the cutest little, little melon. And so I bought it. All right, this is going to be another long one, so just buckle in. Uh, herbs. Now, uh, I will be, hopefully, me and my partner, will be purchasing a house. <laughs> um, and I'm currently reading a book about permaculture. And I would really love to have my fruit trees and have some kind of like perennial herb gardens around the fruit trees. I've seen it done in the community garden here um, where you just have like these beautiful rosemary bushes and sage and chamomile that comes back and just like, it's this really like beautiful area of herbs and I cook with a ton of herbs. So um, I had to refill a lot of my herb reserve, if you will, um, because I was just kind of depleted. So I went ahead and chose Botanical Interests. Botanical Interests is a really great company uh, to start out with. They have a lot of really great information on the seed packet on how to on how to plant this stuff. Um, so Botanical Interests is one that I buy frequently um, and I think is a great seed company. Um, so this is chamomile. This is German chamomile. And German chamomile, um, there's another type of chamomile as well. Zloty Lawn. Something like that. So chamomile is great. It will reseed itself every year, um, which is awesome. I drink chamomile tea basically every night before I go to bed. Um, English thyme. It's another one. I've never started some of these from seeds, so like a little nervous. Um, this is Mexican tarragon. This is also super, super tasty. Um, Mexican tarragon is just really, really good. It's this really beautiful floral herb. Broadleaf sage. So this is gonna be a little different from the sage that you're used to buying at the store. This sage has um, leaves that are a little bit more elongated. And then cilantro. Now cilantro does not grow here in the summer, but I will still plant it in the spring if I can because it will grow and then put off seed and self-seed itself. So cilantro actually does not do well in the super, super heat. Um, it does best in like colder, not cold, but just not hot, like, like just above freezing 
to like 70 degrees is when cilantro does really well. And so I want it to be able to reseed itself to kind of have that kind of like perennial permaculture type setup. Oregano, um, y'all, the oregano in my community garden plot, it's probably taken over half the garden at this point. I could not get it to die, okay? I used to have cinder blocks outlining my community garden and that's where I put all my herbs. Great method, by the way. And um, everybody told me they were like, they were like, those cinder blocks are going to heat up and it's going to kill everything you've got in those cinder blocks. Flowers, herbs. That never happened, by the way. Just put that out there. Um, that oregano took over a whole edge. Like a whole short edge. And I could not rip it up fast enough. Like, couldn't use it fast enough. I couldn't rip it up fast enough. It was like common knowledge that anybody could have as much oregano from my plot as they wanted. Don't even have to ask. Take it all. I don't care. The freeze of 2021, that epic freeze we had, that didn't even kill them. Um, the other one is borage. This is another one that um, I really want to plant. Um, it won't, it, you're supposed to really sow this in the spring and it doesn't do great in the heat, but it reseeds itself. And it's just really beautiful. The pollinators love it. I don't really even eat it, um, but the pollinators just are obsessed with it. We have had a seed spill and I don't know which packet they belong to. I hope they go in this packet. <laughs> uh, if not, I'm in for a surprise. I'm a little hard on the basils, cause I just really love basil. Um, and I have this idea, I really love pesto. Like we like love pesto. I really wanna, do, I really wanna freeze pesto in ice cube trays and put it in a bag. And so then I can just like grab a little cube of pesto whenever I want it. We're gonna see how it works. The basil might turn like brown in the freezer. So one of the first ones I really like is weirdly this free packet I got from Baker Creek. This is cinnamon basil. I don't eat it, but it smells fantastic. It smells so good. Um, this is purple basil. This is one I will eat and make like a dark pesto out of. This is the one that spilled, or at least I hope so, because I put all the seeds back in there. Um, now this is sweet Thai basil. Uh, we do eat a lot of curries, and so this is a really nice herbaceous element to be able to add to curry. Uh, lemon basil, never tried it. Kind of excited. I bet it's going to be real good in pesto or just sauce in general. Italian Genovese basil. This is just like your very normal basil. So we'll be growing quite a few of those. The other one that I really love to grow is parsley. Um, this is a packet of seeds from Eden Brothers. Eden Brothers is another really good seed company to get started with. Um, they're pretty affordable and they kind of have all of your standard stuff. So parsley will definitely be a big one. Um, parsley is something I really love to make in the summer. I love to make chimichurri and put that on a bunch of different stuff. It's really good. Marjoram is an herb I love to cook with, but I've never had success growing. Um, the seeds are teeny tiny, like teeny tiny. So I'm gonna try again this year and see how it goes. I don't know what y'all's obsession is with lemon balm. I don't like it. That's all. I have a whole thing of different squashes. Um, I'm not actually gonna plant any squash this year because it's just always really hard in our area. We've got squash vine borer in this uh, part of the country really bad. However, with that being said, I do love squash and I do, I do think maybe someday, call me, call me crazy. I think it could be really cool to have not necessarily like a greenhouse of squash because it would definitely die with like the humidity and the heat. Um, but some kind of covered situation where you could like hand pollinate stuff and get your squashies to grow. Just, I'm putting that in the think tank. I'll put it that way. But I won't be growing squash this year. However, squash, fun fact, with squash, a lot of people hear winter squash, like butternut, uh, acorn, spaghetti, those types of squashes. A lot of people hear that and they think that those squash grow in the winter. They don't, they actually grow in the summer. So the difference is summer squash is supposed to be eaten in the summer when it's really young. Winter squash is meant to be grown to like full maturity and then actually stored for winter eating. So it's all grown in the spring and summer. Um, it's just depending on when it's recommended to eat it. Okay, so next one's uh, eggplant. Uh, I really wanna lean into the eggplant life this year because uh, it grows really well in the heat really tasty you can make it taste like a bunch of different things so I have a bunch of different varieties of eggplants so we will see which ones 
get planted. I do like all of them though, and I want to do some like Japanese eggplant, like the long ones. Uh, Rosa Bianca, I will put a photo, but Rosa Bianca did pretty well for me last year. Um, these are Listata di Gandia eggplant. That was embarrassing. Um, but they're this really pretty striped eggplant um, that the center is supposed to be really, really creamy and it's supposed to stand up really well to being fried, like fried eggplant. Um, now these are really fun. These are called white egg eggplants um, or otherwise known as aubergines, which I don't know how I feel about the word aubergine. Probably my southern accent makes it sound a little silly. And then we just have like our traditional big eggplant. Now another one is cucumbers. I have a love-hate relationship with cucumbers because I love cucumbers like fresh. I don't like pickles. And when you get on a good cucumber string, they come in hot. Like hot, okay? Now, I do like eating them fresh, but they're also a little finicky. If it gets too hot, they get nasty. I mean, that bitter flavor of a cucumber that's been subjected to heat that's too hot, bleh. It's so bad, I'll literally spit it out on the spot, which is gross, and I don't feel bad. I won't even swallow it. Um, but that's why I got the Silver Slicer Cucumber. So Silver Slicers are a white variety of cucumber that supposedly do really well in the heat. Um, lemon cucumbers, because they are just funsies. Um, I tried to grow them last year, it didn't go so well. Um, your typical like straight eight cucumber, very typical cucumber hybrid variety. Now this Armenian white cucumber is not a cucumber. It's a melon, but they call it an Armenian white cucumber and I will grow it like a cucumber and it will be delicious. Now the other thing I grow like a cucumber that's not a cucumber are loofah gourds. Now I tried loofahs last year. They didn't do great because I didn't have that many pollinators. Trying to change that with the whole permaculture situation, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, tomatillos. Y'all had a banger tomatillo year a couple years ago. And I ate salsa verde all summer, and it was amazing, and I didn't can any of it. And then this year, I had a sucky tomatillo year, and it was sad. And so yeah, we're trying to be better this year, okay? Tomatillos. This is a variety called Rio Grande Verde. I have grown these before, they are wonderful. These are two varieties that are going to be new to me this year. This is the purple tomatillo. Um, I have a suspicion. I have not found a recipe for salsa negra yet. Salsa negra is one of my favorite things ever and I can't find a freaking recipe for it, but I got purple tomatillo so that I can try and make salsa negra. Don't know how they make it. If anybody knows how to make salsa negra, it is like this like smoky, almost burned flavor and it's so good and it's not that spicy it's like a warm spice it's not like a like hitch in the face spice oh it's so good um and then the other one i'm going to be trying is the cisneros grande 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 whatever tomatillo um they're supposed to be huge like it says the size of a small lime to a summer apple so i'm excited See, we're finally speeding up. This is like a well-coursed dinner, okay? Because I'll slow you back down, don't worry. Um, so okra. Okra, my okra didn't even do well this year, y'all. <laughs> even my okra was mad. Like, take another sip of water. It was a bad garden year. Okay, um, spineless Clemson, very standard okra. Um, again, spineless Clemson. Jing orange, this was a really My dog is sighing like he pays the bills around here. What the hell? Okay, uh, this is a Jing orange okra. This one was super fun to grow a couple years ago, like super fun. I do think one of the mistakes I made this year was I did not soak my okra seeds. So the year before I had a great okra year and I soaked my okra seeds for 24 hours before I actually planted the okra, like before I actually sowed the seed in the ground. Um, this year I did not do that. Big mistake, big, big mistake. Um, and then this is red burgundy okra. Now I may potentially, depending on how I'm feeling, I might actually get a few more okra varieties because okra, just like melons, do really well here when it's hot, nasty, and disgusting and everybody just wants to crawl in an ice hole. So, um, I really enjoy growing okra. It freezes beautifully 
and I really like making soups and curries in the fall and winter um, that have okra in them. Like I will buy frozen okra from the store and throw them into that stuff because it thickens things up and it just has a really lovely texture and it's really good for your digestion. All right, y'all, green beans. Grow the green beans, okay? Freeze them, grow them, love them. They're so good. Some of my favorite varieties out of here that I will grow, burpee stringless. Now I did read in the Southern Exposure Seed Exchange catalog that if a bean doesn't have to be stringed, it's not a bean worth eating. And that made me aggressively curious about older varieties of beans that do have the string. Because generally we don't buy those anymore, not a thing. But now I need to know, do they taste better? We'll see. Contender bush beans, great. Dragon's tongue bush beans, hot take. They're beautiful. I don't love the flavor. I've grown them a few times. The flavor is not my favorite. I will still grow them because they're fun, but they're just not my favorite. Blue Lake Bush Beans. This is a hybrid variety that is basically a similar green bean as the one you buy for canned green beans. In fact, Royal Burgundy. They are the most beautiful deep purple color and I ordered this massive bag like 1.5 years ago, two years ago, and I only have like six left. So sad. So I'm gonna have to order more of those. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to plant bush beans this year. It really depends on the timing of us buying a house. Now, one thing I am excited about with us buying a house is um, I will be able to have proper um, cattle panel trellises that are like arched. Um, and that is where I will be growing pole beans. So when you grow green beans, you have either the bush variety or the pole bean, right? So you have the bush where you plant them close together. I plant them like probably like three to four inches apart um, and they actually hold each other up, which is pretty cool. Um, so with green beans, they like literally grow in like a bush. Pole beans, climb. So they need something to climb on. Um, I grew these last fall in my backyard where there's like not proper sun exposure. They did okay. Um, I'm really excited to grow these in a better area. So uh, these are Dean's Purple, so it's a purple pole bean, green bean, and these are just your typical green ones. They're called Ideal Market Black Crease Back. The last part of this is flowers. And I'm gonna try really hard not to like go in too hard uh, about the different varieties because I, literally every single one of these is full, like so full. I find if you do not typically grow flowers in with your vegetables, you are missing out on a few things. You are missing out on pollinators, you're missing out on pest control, you're missing out on beauty of having vegetables and flowers in the same space. I Flowers for me, and I've said this lots of times, flowers for me in my garden are the one thing when everything else is going to absolute crap, okay? They are the one thing that I can rely on to be beautiful and be really proud of. There's not that many things that can kill flowers, okay? There's a lot of stuff that will kill your vegetables. There's a lot of pests that will ruin your vegetables. There are not that many things that are gonna mess with your flowers. So I love growing flowers. First ones we'll talk about are zinnias. Um, I'll, pick a, I'll pick out a few of just my favorite varieties. Um, I'm gonna be doing queen lime this year. These, are, these seeds are from Florette. I'll talk a little bit about Florette in a few minutes. Cactus flower zinnias. These were my favorite thing I grew last year. They are gorgeous, like so beautiful. The 